In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with Venn diagrams. In example A, it says two coins are tossed, one after the other. Event A consists of the outcomes when tossing heads on the first toss. So anytime on the first toss you got heads, that's event A. Event B consists of the outcomes when tossing heads on the second toss. Draw a Venn diagram to represent this sample. So the first thing that we want to do is think about our whole sample space. So in other words, what are all the different things that could happen when you flip a coin or toss a coin two times, one after the other? So our sample space, S, will actually consist of four different possible outcomes. In this case, we could get heads on the first toss and heads on the second toss, or heads on the first toss and tails on the second toss. Those are the only two ways that we could get heads on the first toss. We could also get tails on the first toss and heads on the second, or tails on both. And those are the four possible events. So our sample space is going to be represented by a big box. Okay, so this box is this whole experiment that's happened, flipping a coin two times. Now event A we can make as one circle. And event B is another circle. And we can label them A and B so we don't forget. So event A was tossing heads on the first toss. So if we look at our sample space, there are two ways that we toss heads on the first toss. So both of those will go in circle A. But before we put them in, we should look at circle B or event B. That says when you toss heads on the second toss, you're in event B. So the two places where you toss heads on the second toss are here and here. And you'll notice that the outcome of getting heads twice falls in both circles. So that is going to go in the center of the two circles, where the two circles overlap. So now we can fill them in. Heads, heads will go in the center part. Event A with getting heads and then tails, but not heads in the second, will go here. And then tails heads will go here. Notice that we had one left over that didn't fit in event A or B. So those can just go outside the circle out here. It's still in the box because it's in the sample space. The box represents the full sample space, but it doesn't fall in either event A or event B. Now let's look at example B. It says, event A represents randomly choosing a student from ABC High School who holds a part-time job. All right, so anyone from ABC High School who holds a part-time job will be in circle A. Event B represents randomly choosing a student from ABC High School who is on the honor roll. Okay, so anyone from ABC High School who is on the honor roll will be in circle B. Draw a Venn diagram to represent this example. So we want to start out by making our box to represent the full sample space. In this case, the sample space will be students in ABC High School. So anyone that is a student at the high school is in this box. Now some of those students will have part-time jobs, and those are the ones that are in event A. So we're making a circle for event A, and these are people with part-time jobs. There will also be a set of people that are students at ABC High School who are on the honor roll. And we know that there are probably some people that fall in both categories. So this is B, and those are honor roll people. And in the center part, this portion right here, because it falls in both circles, these would be all the students with both part-time jobs and are on the honor roll. Now, because there are people that will neither have a part-time job nor be on the honor roll, those will be all the people that are on the outsides of the circles out here. So if you found a person like that, they would go on the outside of the circles. Finally, let's look at example C. You are asked to roll a die. 
Event A is the event of rolling a 1, 2, or 3. Event B is the event of rolling a 3, 4, or 5. Draw a Venn diagram to represent this example. What is A and B? So this is the intersection of A and B. Meaning anything that falls in both event A and event B. And what is A or B? So these would be any uh, outcomes that are in circle A or in circle B, but they don't have to necessarily be in both. All right, so let's just make a Venn diagram here to show this situation. And in this box is all of the possible outcomes that you could get when you roll a die. So remember that the sample space in this case when you roll a die is you could get one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll assume that this is just a standard six-sided die. Now event A is when you get one, two, or three. And event B is three, four, or five. So notice where they overlap is at the three. So in the middle we'll have three. And then for event A, besides the three, we also have one and two. And for event B, besides the three, we have four and five. Now from the sample space, we've used one, two, three, four, five, but we're missing the six. So the six will go on the outside. So now we can answer the questions. What is A and B? So that's the intersection. When you're thinking about A and B, that's this region right here, always, where the circles overlap. So the answer to that would just be three. So we can write that like this, A and B equals three. Now the other one, what is A or B? So when you're answering that question, you should think about anything that falls in the circles all together. They could be in the overlap part or not, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, it's everything basically except the six, one, two, three, four, and five, because all of those numbers are either in A or they're in B, or both. So the, to write that, we would just say A or B equals, and then we list out all the numbers that are in either of the circles. And that's it.